Foundry Groups, it is good to be with you guys again this week. Uh, before we get started, um, I want to thank you guys for all the pictures you sent me this past week um, of your group's meeting. I'm so excited to see all of you guys engaging in God's Word. And we're going to double up this week and ask you for something even more. So there's two things I want to ask you for. And I want you guys to go around in the group and nominate two people to do this. Okay, the first thing is this. And here, let me give you some context of what we're actually going to do with it first before you sign up. So we um, have a groups mixer coming up in the middle of February that we are so excited for. And uh, we've seen a lot of growth in groups over the course of the last few years and really want to promote our next groups mixer well to the church uh, for people who are not in it. So we want to do two things. One, um, get people excited about groups, make people laugh, help them see that we have a good time in groups, and B, help them understand understand a little bit more about what happens in groups because a lot of times there's stereotypes about what groups look like. Are they just meeting in deep Bible study? Like we, we want to speak to the why behind groups and what you actually enjoy about meeting with your group. So first thing is this. Um, uh, we want to eliminate some stereotypes about the group's mixer. And one, one idea we came up with is naming your best pickup line. So maybe it's a pickup line that you've heard or something that has worked on your, your girlfriend or your fiance or your current spouse. Not current spouse, that sounds bad. Your spouse, the one you're staying with forever, right? Uh, if you go through, go through uh, your group and say, what is it your favorite pickup line maybe that you've used or that you've ever heard? And after you do that, Pick the best two, and then that person has to stand up behind something, and there's going to be some directions on the bottom of the screen here. But we want you to record those things and send them into uh, my number. Uh, my number is going to be at the bottom of the screen again, like last week. But we want uh, to compile those videos of the best pickup lines and put them into a video that we can show for our services and say, hey, these are some pickup lines. If you have any, any stereotypes about groups, mixer, it's not these things. It's, it's a moment where we can gather and get, help you get to know a bunch of people in the church. So that's the first thing that I'm going to ask you guys to do. The next thing is to go around and talk about the, the let me actually um, pull this back up here a minute. It's the, the why of groups. Um, let me quick find this. I have it written down perfect here. Um, why do you love groups? Right? Why do you love groups? Um, I want to see, not only am I curious about why you love groups, but I want the church, the people who are in, in the seats that may be, may be debating about joining a group, um, I don't think there is a better selling point than you speaking about why you love groups. So, two videos. One, your favorite stereotype, and two, why do you love groups? If you could send those to us um, today when you see this or over the course of the next week, we would love the chance to be able to put those together and speak value into uh, the people of our church who are not yet in a group um, because we'll be pr pushing that groups mixer here coming up shortly. So if you got any questions, that don't be afraid to reach out. Um, we'd love, uh, love to keep you engaged in that way. With that being said, we'll jump right into content. As you can see, the question behind me, Jesus asked, we're in a series looking at all the questions that Jesus asked, um, or, or many of the questions that Jesus asked throughout his ministry in the Gospels, and the one we're on this week is, why are you thinking these things? Why are you thinking these things? And we pull that from the story of Jesus when he is in a crowded house, he's teaching, and his, his popularity is starting to gain interest, right? People are gathering around him. The room is packed, and there's a group of friends who have a friend who's paralyzed, and they know that if they can get him to Jesus, that Jesus has the power to heal him. So these friends bring him to where they know Jesus is going to be, and you can picture this moment that they get there, and it's packed, there's no way they're going to be able to get their friend to Jesus. So what do they do? They look at the house and they're like, I think we could climb that. <laughs> I think we could get on the roof. And that's what they do. They get up on this roof and they start digging through the roof and they lower their friend down to Jesus. And Jesus, in this moment, um, he heals the man and he forgives this man of their sins. Now, in the crowd, there are some religious leaders, 
And they um, start asking questions. And Jesus responds to them by saying, why are you thinking these things? Uh, there's intent in the religious leaders to, um, to find Jesus at fault of something. And Jesus is asking, why are you thinking these things? Uh, because Jesus knows what's in their heart. Right? He knows their intentions are not pure. And I think we can ask ourselves these things as well. When we look at our heart, if we look at it as being something that's a soft heart, or do we respond to situations with a hard heart? Um, and Pastor Eric dial, dove into these ideas over the course of this weekend. And if you weren't able to jump into that teaching, make sure you go watch that sometime this week. But a few takeaways that are important for us to understand. A person with a soft heart is faithful to Jesus, not social rules. And a person with a soft heart is courageously obedient because they have hope in Jesus and not in their own ability. Um, and that is... That is where we're going to land today. So as we're thinking about those things, we're going to jump right into groups content. Um, and this, the icebreaker for this week to start off is this. Do you have Taco Tuesday in your work? Or maybe you stay at home with the kids, or maybe you're just hanging out at home. Do you have Taco Tuesdays? Or do you have a certain food that you eat on every Tuesday, or you eat this for breakfast on every Wednesday. Do you have some specific days that you eat specific food? And how do you feel if that day and that specific food gets interrupted? Now, I want you to pick up and read from Mark 2, 2 through 12. Um, and I did a brief synopsis of that story just a bit ago, but I want you to read that story and hear the words of Jesus and the interactions that Jesus has with uh, the man who got lowered and the people in the room. So take a minute, read Mark 2, 2 through 12. I want you to put yourself in the middle of this story. Let's say it happens tonight at group. You are in this house. You are, this is happening around you right now. In all honesty, what do you think your first thought would be by verse 5 if that happens in your room? Why do you think the friends did what they did? Why do you think the teachers of the law were thinking the way that they were? Describe a time when you jumped to judgment, only to later realize the person was doing God's will. Oh man, I think this one is a great question. Number five, how can we know when we should speak up because something is truly wrong in the eyes of God or when we should be open to change and open to hearing somebody? I think we always have to listen, right, and hear. But how do we know um, the difference between those two of speaking up and listening and being open to change? Discuss that in your group. Describe a time when your heart was soft to the Lord's leading. What happened and how did it feel? Pastor Eric compared um, the presence of God in our hearts to fire. Um, how do these two compare to each other? Do you agree that a person who has a soft heart is faithful to Jesus, not social rules, and courageously obedient because they hope in Jesus and not their own ability? Um, why or why not? 
And do you have a specific example of how you've seen this play out? And we're going to go the opposite way. When you think of somebody with a hard heart, do you agree or disagree that they love rules more than people and carry a mental list of why they're more righteous than somebody else is? Why or why not? And do you have a specific example for that as well? And for the last question, let's end today with this. What will be the result if next time you find yourself thinking, this isn't how we do things, and you actually let Jesus ask you, why are you thinking these things? All right, groups, that is all we have for today. As always, and in prayer, um, we believe that there is power in community when the community gets together and pray. So make sure to end in prayer and be living life together in that way. Um, and if you've got time, jump into the Digging Deeper section. It is rich in, um, in the Bible. I, I think there's nothing better than going one step farther and looking through the Old Testament, seeing how it compares to the New Testament, and realizing that this story is one story from God and his faithfulness to us. So jump into that if you've got time. Otherwise, leaders, make sure to take attendance. We love to know who's uh, joining us in groups. Otherwise, I will see you guys next week.